Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time tuning in, welcome to All Things Delicious. Today on Brave Belly, I just received the birthday box from Katz's Deli. That's right, famous Katz's Deli from New York City in the Lower East Side. I got their, it's called the Pastrami Plus. We have sliced juice pastrami by the pound, sliced corned beef by the pound, mini black and white cookies, sliced Swiss cheese, uh, deli mustard, Reuben dressing, sauerkraut, half sour pickle, full sour pickle, and deli rye bread. So this is how it looks when it comes to your house. And you get this kind of newspaper looking, you know, visual Katz's Deli print paper for aesthetics. Why not? You are probably paying a lot of money. This is a gift from my younger brother. It's my birthday tomorrow. So thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. You brought me a little taste of home. I'm from New York City. That's why I'm wearing this cheesy t-shirt, but it's fitting for the occasion. And so this is basically the instructions. I'm going to pull everything right now. We're going to see how it shows up at your doorstep. And then I'm going to, I got water boiling. That's the way to prepare this because they want you to boil it. Um, so the Cats is hand carved meats. Defrost meat from room temperature. Do not remove from plastic packaging. Boil water in a saucepan or a large pot. Enough to submerge entire meat package. Submerge entire package in boiling water. Five minutes, remove package, blah, blah, blah. Slice and enjoy. So that's pretty straightforward. Look how pretty it looks. I'm sure I won't get it to look this good. This is Photoshopped and everything, but we're gonna try our best. So we get this big old box. And that's how it looks. See how it's nice and uh, in insulated. So we got their rye bread. This is very similar to Polish bread, if not the same. We're gonna see if it's as good. Polish bread is probably the best bread I've ever had, in my opinion. Okay, we have black and white cookies, mini black and white cookies. I don't know about these cookies. I've tried them once and I was not impressed. Just overall, not Katz's ones, but just mini black and white cookies to me are bland and mid but we'll see if maybe now that i'm older my taste buds might be different we'll give that a try then we got their pickles so we have these are oh these are full sour and that's how they look then we have some mustard their deli mustard es gesund I don't know if that means keep refrigerated or what. Why would they have it in a different language? That's weird. Um, es gesund, sauerkraut. Keep refrigerated. I don't know what language that is. I don't know if it's Yiddish or what. Because I, to me, cat is cats Jewish? I don't freaking know and I don't care. I just want to eat the food. Okay, and this is half sour. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Jewish, you know. Just, just, that's my guess, first guess, I could be wrong. Eight ounce Reuben dressing. That's how that looks. We're gonna open up, okay, so here's the start of the show, the corned beef. And I already have this out, you know, so it's ready to throw in that boiling water, which is boiling in the background. Then we have the pastrami. And so, yeah, they cut this all nice, they trim all the, fattier pieces and make it look that's what makes this look you know taste so good is there it is high in fat and uh, so i got the double pastrami so this is for the pastrami lover which i'm not really a pastrami head like that my dad is i don't know about my brother and we have swiss but when it's good it's good and i have had catches before because i worked across the street guys Buckle in for a long episode. I got a lot of yapping about uh, about in this episode because I'm from New York City. I worked across the street from Katz's. I know kids that worked at Katz's, like personal friends. So I have a lot of stories about New York City, that whole experience. I'm born and raised there. Um, and so, yeah, so we're going to make all this food. We're going to experience it together. We're going to enjoy it together. And I'm going to tell you some of my anecdotes and my stories from New York City. Stick around. We are back. So we have the meat right here. I have another packet of pastrami, but I left it in the fridge. It's going to be way too much food for now. 
So may, maybe I'll bring it into work and share it with some of my coworkers as like my birthday celebration. So I heated this up. It was actually like six minutes, not five, whatever. And it tells you to heat the bread up for like 30 to 40 seconds in the toaster. So I put it in the oven for about a minute or so. They say not to make it toasty, just nice and warm. So <clears throat> beautiful. Mm, beautiful warm bread and it smells like rice smells delicious. So now we're gonna construct this puppy So first let's open it up. We're gonna start off with the Corned beef we're gonna open it up and I thought I, I would have to like slice it. No, everything's already pre-sliced You just slap it all together. So nice and easy so We're gonna do this together. Let's go the corned beef uh, for reheating guidance, please refer, blah, 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 blah. We already did that. And here it is up close. 100% hand carved in New York City. That's so cheesy, but it works. Marketing works, guys. Cause, But yeah, so there's a lot of gimmicks with uh, Katz's. First and foremost, Katz is delicious, okay? Even before I'm going to try this, because this is the, you know, this is the the mail order version, but I've had cats before and it is delicious. So let's get that straight out the way. There's a reason why they're so popular. And so, wow, that smells so good. And it just looks beautiful. It's glistening, steaming, has that salty smell because it is corned beef. And I don't know if the camera picks it up, but I mean, it, the slices just look very pretty and rich. And this is steaming. We're going to try a piece right now. Check that out. See the marbling. Now, I'm not into corned beef like that. My dad loves it, like I said. It's cheap meat, but... And very salty. It's not bad. It's good corned beef, you know? Usually when my dad makes it, it's a lot higher fat content. He doesn't trim it as much. So this is nice. They really trim all their pieces to make it very much more presentable, more enjoyable. You know, us Americans, we don't love very high contents of fat. On the other hand, my father, who's European, loves it. All right, so we're going to do this one first. We're going to do their famous Reuben. So let's go with the Reuben first, and then we will do the pastrami. Or should we do both back to back? No, nah, we'll do one at a time. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. So let me grab a plate. Let me grab bread. Okay, so as far as the Reuben is concerned, I believe that is first step is right here, the dressing, the Reuben dressing. So I get, I guess, what is it? Is it Thousand Islands? I don't know. Mmm, tastes like relish. Very strong on the relish flavor, which I love. Like more relish flavor than anything. So we're gonna put that nice and pretty. We're gonna make sure we cover the entire bread just because there's a lot of meat going on this. So we want every bite to be very flavorful. High in relish, looks very well seasoned and tastes flavorful. It's like Thousand Islands with relish. And so let's just start, start piling it on, I guess. We're going to put a fat piece in there. Why not? Now, normally this would be enough, but Katz is known for their humongous fatty sandwiches. So we're going to make it extra fatty the way they, or thick, I mean the way they actually serve it. Now, when I was in Katz's, I only, I didn't get, I've never gotten this. I've only had the pastrami, which I prefer more, but we're gonna try the corned beef since I have both. First for everything. Mm. And the cheese as well, I warmed up. It's not, it's, it's room temperature basically. Now, I don't know if I should put the cheese first or yeah, I'll put the cheese first so it melts a little bit on the meat and then I'll put, the uh, sauerkraut. So this is for the cheese lovers. I love Swiss cheese. I think it's my favorite cheese. I would probably say it definitely is my favorite cheese. So, I mean, smells like feet. So good old, good old Swiss cheese, you know? I love it. I'm gonna just peel it though so it's 
thin slices. As you can see, I ripped it, but I am trying to like just be fast and um, not too delicate. I don't want this video to drag on forever for you guys. I know not everybody um, has patience, so. All right, and that is their cheese. And now we will do the sauerkraut. Ugh, my hands are all greasy. Don't you worry. Maybe these will help. I should have wore these earlier, but I was like, nah, who wears gloves? Like, I'm not working. This is for me. So, but I, maybe that'll help me open this sauerkraut. I love sauerkraut. Oh, there we go. All right. It looks a little dry on top. Maybe that. They probably it's supposed to be that way because it is going on a sandwich. So you don't want it to just be a bunch of slop, if you know what I mean. Yep. And the lower we get, the more moist it is. And that's looking very pretty, in my opinion. Look at that. And then we got one more slice of bread and we'll put more of this Reuben on it. And so the next sandwich, the pastrami, we're going to make it right away because I don't want it to get too cold. So we're going to make the pastrami with mustard the classic or you know what it's it's still in the bag so it's holding its warmth so i will eat this one first all right let's cut up these pickles too we got both uh the sour and the full so let me open the jar up and so this is the sour, full sour. You could, t you could tell they're full sour because they're like almost see-through in a way. I'm gonna put this on another baby plate, not to. Okay. And then we'll compare it to the half sour. Fun fact, one of my best friends growing up bought a very famous pickle company out of Queens, New York. It's called Eddie's Pickles, guys. If you ever heard of it, let me know in the comments down below. So yeah, he was my best friend. You know, we haven't hung out or seen each other basically since high school. You know how life goes. Think people do their own thing and people grow apart, which is I guess what happened. But shout out to my boy, Ralph. Good, good high, uh, childhood friend growing up and a uh, very nice family his, his, uh, you know just actually i could say i kind of have love for them if if i'm gonna be honest because i knew them when i was a crazy little kid and uh yeah they always showed i guess more or less showed respect for me and everything and they were just good people and so yeah shout out to ralph and uh eddie's pickles but there's more depth to that story that actually eddie's pickles was in, um, back in the 90s, there was like this popularity um, of the Jerky Boys. I don't know if you guys heard, heard of the Jerky Boys. Let me know in the comments if you heard of the Jerky Boys. It's basically recordings. They would sell DV, uh, CDs of recordings of people doing prank calls. And they actually called the pickle company called Eddie's Pickles. It's, um, it's basically like a distributor. And so they called them in Maspeth. So it, you know, kind of resonated with with me and my friends because we lived close to Maspeth, Queens. Brook, the part of Brooklyn where I grew up is Northern Brooklyn, Greenpoint. And it's literally, you know, it's borders uh, Maspeth, Queens. And so we'd go to Queens all the time and that's where Ralph was from. And anyway, all right, let's get into this sandwich, guys. Look how pretty that looks. That's official, I would say. I think it'd be better if the cheese was melted, but I'm too hungry to wait around and et cetera, whatever. Let's go. First bite going and guys, cheers. New York style, baby. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Wow, it's the relish for me. I never thought I'd like it so much. This is the best Reuben I've ever had. I've never liked Reuben. I don't know if I mentioned that, but this is the best one. It's actually sweet. So it just adds so much depth because you're getting that salty from the corned beef. 
you got that savory, you know, that cheese, basically that rye bread, it just soaks everything up and that Reuben is phenomenal. Mmm. Guys, this sandwich is $27. Let me slice this pickle up all nice and formal. Normally, I would just eat it straight up, but let's present it how they would at Katz's. They actually serve it to you sliced. You get the sandwich and a pickle for 27 bucks. So check that out. So we'll try the half sour first. Yep, tastes half sour. It reminds me of cucumbers from my grandpa's garden in Poland. Not really used to eating these unless I'm in Europe. I'm just not a pickle head like that. Mm. Guys, I'm so surprised because this truly tastes better than when I what I anticipated. Mm. It's actually very complex in flavors, like, and they're all like savory and mm, really good. All right, let's chase it with the full sour. Mm. For me, it's the full sour. Wow. That's the way to go. Cause the sour also like gives that brightness and cuts everything, all the savoriness down. So it's this intricate dance of balance. Mm. This is such a pleasant experience because now I know corned beef, I usually eat it like straight up with potatoes or cabbage, you know, for like St. Patty's Day. So I never actually ate it in a sandwich because I assumed it'd be very similar. But when it's all mixed up like this, it's phenomenal. You don't taste the saltiness, like the heaviness of corned beef. Mm. A beautiful balance. Mm. Guys, we're moving on to the pastrami. Wow, that was so good. I'm going to finish that. Definitely going to finish that. All right. Pastrami time. Now my dad's a pastrami head. He'll salivate just talking about it. So I was never into it like that. I'm not like into just like warm meats like that. Like that's why I'm not a huge fan of Arby's, but a lot of people are. However, this is good. I've bought this before. It was 26 freaking dollars. And is it worth the money? No, but it's like, when you eat this, you get this uh, like mental thing of like, ah, you live once, you know, do something kind of like maybe financially it's not worth it, but treat yourself. That's the vibe you get when you have this. And it's fitting for the occasion. It is my birthday tomorrow, guys. So this is like the first day of celebrations from my brother, Adam. So thanks, Adam. I appreciate it. So, yeah, I was saying earlier that... Uh, I worked across the street from Katz's. It was a bar called Nice Guy Eddie's. I was a bar back in my like early 20s, like early to mid 20s. Started off with just like a Friday night gig because it's good cash money every night, like on a Friday, Saturday, you know? And then I like picked up a little more shifts because it was good cash money back in the early 2000s. Plus I had so many friends out there you know, especially in the Lower East Side, they call that area Lower Deck or Alphabet City because all the streets go start going Avenue A, Avenue B, Avenue C. So that's hence Avenue, uh, Alphabet City. So, yeah, this is the mustard, by the way. Sorry for yapping, guys. I'm getting ahead of myself. This is the type of mustard. This is my favorite mustard. Honey mustard is only good for like burger or fries. But this is 
mustard I like for like everything else, for hot dogs, for this type of stuff. It's my favorite mustard. And so anyway, I was saying, yeah, so I was working there and I loved it. It was cash money, um, good money, very, very little work. A um, lot of great friends that I have to this day. Shout out to my boy, Justin. He got me the job. Um, what else can I say about uh, the Lower East Side? My friend SD2, which is my friend Eric. I haven't seen him in ages. Who knows? He uh, Last time I heard, he was married to a Dominican girl and moved to Uptown, like Harlem, I think, or somewhere like that. Uh, who else? Mike McGinnis, who's or just, I guess, I don't know if I was supposed to say his last name, but yeah, Mike. Shout out to Mike, who now lives in Texas, has a beautiful wife and a son. Just a lot of friendships from working and, you know, in that area, in the Lower East Side, across the street from Katz's. So check this out. This is the pastrami, steaming hot. And so I just remember the pastrami. They just serve you hella pastrami on mustard, on rye, and that's it. And they just pack it. Like, I remember it's bursting. And I think it's because the pastrami, look how beautiful it is. It's just, see the outside, it has like that bark of flavoring. It's like peppercorn. I don't know exactly what that is. Maybe you guys know, leave it in the comments, but it just hella flavor and it's, you know, has greasiness to it. Let's try it straight up. Mmm. Oh yeah, delicious. It tastes so different than the corned beef. It's less salty, but more seasoned and flavored. Corned beef to me just tastes like salt. Okay, it, it, a good one. This one is absolutely delicious, but it's more salty. This just tastes like more seasonings. And like that crushed black pepper, but it's like that pepper has only flavor, but zero spice in a great way. Mm. So yeah, I put like, I guess, they would probably put all of this in the sandwich, which is probably like a half a pound, if I'm not mistaken. And so the pastrami is $26. That's 27 and this is 26 for one sandwich. So yeah, it is crazy. It's, is it worth it? Only once in a while, treat yourself like once a year, something like that. You know, I can't speak for everybody. That's how I just, that's how I actually have Katz's food once every freaking four or five years because otherwise you know I'm not rich like that and if I was too I don't think it's smart to have it very often because then it loses its lust you know its luster it loses that specialty factor all right guys we're going in with the first bite the famous Katz's pastrami on rye and mustard check that out ready first bite going in Mmm. Wow. Mmm. It's got that gelatinous texture to it. So good in flavor and and it's just rich. And this to cut it down. Mmm. Oh yeah, the full sour is definitely where it's at. So yeah, $26. Is it worth it? Mmm. Yes. But you just do it like once in a while, you know, once every five. If you're visiting, that's why the lines are so crazy. It's for visitors. They're treating themselves. They're, you know, they're... I, I remember once I went to Dubai with two other friends and one of them was like counting his pennies and, and my other friend, we looked at each other like, dude, we didn't fly to Dubai to save money. We came here to have a freaking great time, take cabs, go everywhere, go to restaurants. Like I'm not here just to say I traveled, but some people travel like that. I respect that, but that will never be me. I'd rather not go somewhere and just be poor and not experience everything, you know? So if you go to New York and you're curious about cats, do it. It's $26. You're not, you know, you're not going to get poor. Mm. Mm. 
Now, you definitely wouldn't buy this every day, that's for sure. So, yeah, what other stories do I have? Oh, so my friend Eric, who lived literally a block away on Avenue A, worked at Katz's Deli. And he said all the neighborhood kids, like all mostly like all the Hispanic kids, because the lower is, is east side is hella Hispanic. Most of them were like worked in Katz's. That's just where you work if you live in the neighborhood. And everybody kind of has, in general, has the same feeling about Katz's that I do. They're like, it's good, but it's not like you're paying also for like the aura and, you know, the name, you know. So it's like the neighborhood people, they don't go to Katz's. Hell no. Not at all. You won't ever see anybody... That's like a local that grew up in the Lower East Side going to Katz's regularly to get a sandwich. No, it's if anything, it's a treat or they have friends from out of town, et cetera, et cetera. That's the experience of Katz's. But yeah, so he was telling me how I, I've never actually heard any promotional info from Katz's that they say that like this food is like aged or something like that. But he mentioned that that's what they say, like it's, you know, cooked for 48 hours, da 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 He's like, bro, everything gets freaking just, like the hot dogs are regular Sabret hot dogs that get, like, they tell the staff to open it under, like, the, uh, <clears throat> under the table, so that, you know what I mean? So, like, you don't see the brand name, like it's all, all actually made in-house downstairs. No, they order Sabret hot dogs. Same thing with the pastrami. Apparently, it's not aged or anything. They make it, cut it up, and serve it. It's not like some secret, you know, made in the basement for freaking, you know, aged for 48 hours. No, he's like, there's nothing in there that stays for 48 hours. That thing, once it comes in, it comes out. That's what he told me. So take that for what it's worth. Now, what, uh, the reason why I mentioned why I think it's Jewish is they sell matzo ball soup, which is obviously a Jewish soup, which I've tried. It basically just, to me, tastes like chicken soup with like a, with like a ball made out of bread. That's all, like seasoned bread. All right, guys, another bite. Now we're going to compare the pastrami to the Reuben. Now... I don't know what it is, guys, but I think I'm liking the pastra the the Reuben more. Not the meat, but the sandwich, obviously, with the more depth with the cheese and the with the uh, Reuben dressing. I mean, look how pretty it is. Check that out. Mm. Yeah, it's gonna have to be the Reuben, just because. This sauce is so phenomenal. It's sweet. It hits you with that sugar. So the sugar with that meat is just so good together. What I would suggest, <clears throat> if you go to Katz's, if you go with somebody, one person order the Reuben and one person order the pastrami and split it. And if it's just one person, I would guess, I think I would probably go for the, uh, for the pastrami. Even though I'm liking this one more, I feel like the pastrami, like you need to try it to know what all the buzz is about. I think that's like their staple. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, now we got the mini black and white cookies. I'm going to take another bite of this and go to the cookies, see what they're all about. I would say this sandwich is like a 9 out of 10. And this one is like an 8.5 out of 10. Just it doesn't have enough depth to me. Yeah, the meat is gorgeous and very appealing and tasty and gelatinous. 
uh, very well seasoned and good, but it's at the end of the day, it's just mustard and meat. So, all right, maybe one more bite. Mm. And for another suggestion, if you guys go to New York City, if you don't want to buy, uh, if you're not in the mood for one of these sandwiches, you have to try a New York City hot dog with uh, sauerkraut, onion, and mustard. And you could do ketchup. But it has to have sauerkraut and onion and mustard, minimum. Just get one of those from those little carts that you see, they call them dirty water hot dogs. It's just slang for it. Don't worry about it. Just close your eyes and eat it. It's phenomenal. It's the best hot dog on the planet in my opinion. It's not Nathan's, it's Sabaret. And if you can't find one of those guys, go to Grace Papaya. That, that's another hot dog. It's done in a different way, but it tastes phen phenomenal. And what I mean by that, it's, it's not boiled. It's, it's uh, heated up on those spinning rods, but it just, Oh gosh, that's that's one of my that's probably my favorite hot dog. That and like the dirty water. To tie up. All right, guys. So now we're down to these uh, black and white cookies: flour, sugar, whole eggs, palm oil, water, chocolate fudge, cream foam fondue. I don't know fondant. I don't know kernel paste, citric acid, vanilla flavor, and salt. And this is what it is. So I've never been into these. Let's see if they're any good. I don't know if these are like Jewish cookies or. New York City cookies, but they're kind of like iconic. Nobody that I ever knew gr growing up in New York City actually like had these in their house. Like, matter of fact, none of this stuff. Like real New Yorkers born and raised in New York. You're not, they're not over there at home talking about, oh, cats is. This is definitely like touristy, you know? All right, guys, black and white cookie. Tastes better than I remember it because it's a little softer, like the actual cookie itself is good. But I do not like fudge. Like it tastes like syrup, like Hershey's syrup, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't have a milk chocolatey taste, it's just syrup chocolate. So it's like if you poured syrup on a soft cookie. So it tastes cheap, it doesn't taste rich and delicious, it just tastes like a uh, syrupy so i don't know what people see in these cookies it's like chewing it's like having a soft cookie which is not bad you know but very basic like a vanilla cookie with good texture you know it's a little mushy and chewy it's it's not bad at all but if it fell in like a vat of chocolate syrup so that's the strongest flavor is that chocolate syrup and this white just tastes like cheap frosting from like a cake you know like the overly sweet like pure sugar so in my <coughs> opinion these <coughs> black and white cookies they're like one of the worst cookies you could ever eat um i'd never buy these again and I'm not saying anything about cats or anything. Just these cookies are mid. They're basic. They're like actually probably the worst cookie I've ever had, if I'm going to be quite honest. But I loved everything else. Let me do a little roll up. I'll do two roll ups. One with Swiss and uh, corned beef and one with pastrami because I'm a fat boy like that. Oh boy, I'm sure my coworkers are going to be happy because I'm bringing in a lot of food today into work. So yeah, this Swiss, for some reason, it's tearing. I don't know why. So we'll do one with the Swiss and corned beef. Mmm, that Swiss is so nice. Mmm, so salty. 
like I said, that's why the Reuben is good because it cuts all that salt away. And now this is with the pastrami. Oh yeah, see, this is good. So personally, I think as far as the meat itself, the pastrami tastes better. But as far as like the Katz's sandwiches, the Reuben sandwich, it just more depth and more delicious, even though the meat of the pastrami is better, if that makes sense. So yeah, the pastrami uh, is worth trying. Mm. Guys, and that's it. If you stayed along, around for this long, thank you so much for, you know, truly liking my content. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, signing off.